Since the first emigrants set foot on Australasian soil, that part of the world has been associated with a spirit of progress. The indomitable courage of those early settlers has been inherited by succeeding generations who have made their land what it is today, an agricultural and industrial asset of which the empire is justly proud. of course many fine cities in this part of the world of which Sydney here viewed from the air is perhaps the most famous. Its magnificent harbour and bridge, its modern buildings can be seen clearly in this aerial panorama. Every year, from farms and sheep stations near and far, comes the cream of Australian livestock in competition, the one with the other, to the annual Sydney show. This is the big event of the year for farmers and cattle raisers, whose crowning ambition it is to carry off one of the championship awards. With such aristocrats as these competing, it can be no easy task for the judges to make their decision. There's a horse jumping contest which always attracts a large number of entrants. Some, however, come to grief. It all seems to bear out the old saying, you can lead a horse to water, but you can't make him jump. But here is the super horsewoman to carry the day. representing Australia's wealth, an array of marinas that any farmer would be proud to own. Little do these placid animals realize the excitement that they cause at the wool exchange, where feelings and blood pressure run high. wool forms the greater part of Australia's wealth, her magnificent natural resources make it possible to carry on a widely varying number of industrial activities. For instance, in the north, the cultivation of sugar cane is a rapidly developing industry. The canes grow to a height of 15 feet, and the yield is some 59 tons to the acre. The method of transport may seem a little primitive, but up here in the far north, the horse is still paramount. Timber, too, is a prominent industry, and these mighty kauri pines fall to the woodman's axe, soon to become ornamental panelling or fine furniture in homes all over the world. mills at Kalgoorlie. Modern mining machinery is at work to bring forth gold and wealth from the earth. The ore is extracted and then goes through the many processes which are necessary before the actual gold is obtained. Here it is being chemically treated. In this oozing mixture is hidden wealth, which after smelting emerges as bricks of gold worth 5,000 pounds apiece. The coal industry too is progressing, although in some parts the old back-breaking method of hewing with a pick is still used. Most of the mines have up-to-date equipment, 
like this travelling saw, for instance, which is used for undercutting. Even the traditional pit ponies have been superseded by an iron horse. The value of steel today need hardly be stressed, used as it is for purposes too numerous to mention. These mills at Fort Kembla are a valuable asset to this progressive nation. Australians at work, but they also play hard. They seem to have an inherent love for the water, and throughout the summer months, crowds like this one on Bondi Beach are a common sight. The mighty rollers, while providing an abundance of thrills for aquatic adepts, can be a menace to the not-so-expert swimmer. The safeguard bathers who may get into difficulties are the famous beach patrols. Fine figures of men, these lifeguards, he has seen taking time off for an efficiency parade. A favourite pastime with these aquatic adonises is surfboat racing. The idea is to take the boat through the line of breakers, round a buoy, and then back at express speed. it's not as easy as it sounds. The art is in keeping the craft with bows towards the shore. If you get broadside onto a wave, well, it's just too bad. A picturesque water spot which one associates with Sydney Harbour is the 18-foot yacht race. In spite of the small size of the craft, some of them have masts as high as 52 feet and carry 2,000 square feet of canvas. These races provide one of the greatest sporting thrills possible where the slightest error of judgment may mean a capsize. However, the racy thrill of sailing is not everybody's meat. Some, for instance, like to find relaxation amid the rugged beauty of a place like this and enjoy the swift run of skis over the crisp snow or find pleasure in the contemplation of mighty works of nature such as these. So with this scene of majestic mountain grandeur before our eyes, we say cura to the Antipodes.